was I was down here just driving down the street, like being off and stuff. All right, so tonight I want to talk to you. I've played George Julia for the last 15 years with the Lewis and Clark Honor Guard here in Great Falls. Uh, we're a reenactment group that we try to do things as accurate as we can, and we've had some really cool experiences because to be as accurate as you can, you try to do the things that Lewis and Clark were doing. One of my favorite things that we did here was we were making dugout canoes. Um, if you've heard about it, they made uh, two dugout canoes in four days and it only took six guys. Wow. So um, I was the president of the club one year. I said, we're gonna make a dugout canoe. Had two logs brought to my backyard. I had 26 members come over. Uh, we were gonna use period tools. We started working on it. I figured we'd get both of them done in one weekend, maybe two. Um, six weekends later, and a lot of grog, we hadn't made one. Oh. Um, we got rid of the, you know, period tools. We started using chainsaws. We had a power, power drill, gun. Um, and then we made that one dugout and we went through the winter and I said, what was wrong? So I started reading the journal again and it talks about how they floated the river, went up river from uh, White Bear Island, went up river for six miles and found a stand of trees that were um, fresh and they cut them down and made them into the dugouts. So by happenstance or widening the, the road here and we got a nice big old cottonwood tree and we started making that into a dugout. And as we were working on that dugout and hitting it with the period tools, we had to put safety goggles on because the water was splashing out. Uh, uh, and chunks of wood were coming out like bricks. It was so easy. The logs I'd got the first time had been cut down for a year and a half. And oh, wow. dry. Uh, they were great firewood, but they were not good as a dugout. We thought, well, it's a dugout, it's dry, we'll be able to work with it. No, nope. if you're gonna make a dugout canoe out of cotton wood, please use a green log, okay? Okay. Um, so those are the kind of things that we'll go through and say, okay, we're gonna experience this so then we can come and share information with our the public that wants to hear about it. Um, I wanna talk about the MVP of the trip. Um, and just to see how conscious you guys are of what was happening on the trip, we know it was a military expedition, correct? Yes. yes. All right, we know that there were some some civilians on the trip, correct? Yes. All right, name all five of the civilians. Uh, Sacagawea. Sacagawea is one. Yeah. Her husband. Her husband. Her husband. Her husband. <laughs> a baby. A baby. A baby. A baby. A baby. The French guy. That's her husband. That's, 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 that's her husband. Right. That's her husband. So, yeah, that, uh, we already got it. He's one of the husbands. George, George Juilliard. York. And York. Excellent. Good job, guys. We got all five. Um, the reason I say that uh, George Juilliard is the MVP of the trip is uh, he's older than most of the men. He's 29 years old. Uh, if we talk about any of what's happening on the trip, uh, that's that danger is involved. Uh, you know, if they're um, <laughs> if they're going to be having an encounter uh, with Indians, the the captains are saying we need to take George with us because he can talk with his hands. Um, he's good at, at using his hands to communicate with people along the trail. Um, we also know that George was uh, not a military man. He's a civilian, and right in the uh, journals it says George looks more like an Indian than he does a part of the core. Yeah. He has great hair. <laughs> I think that was written in there. Um, he's a great marksman. They hire him as their hunter. Uh, eventually they turn it into the interpreter. He was not the first man that they wanted to hire to take on the expedition. The first man that they wanted to hire wanted to make them hire two more people to take on the expedition and with the money and the budget they said no we need to take one person so uh julia came highly recommended uh he came out of fort masick and they uh hired him they met him uh said you know we want to hire you to go on this trip he said you know i have some business deals going on i need to take care of they got all that smoothed out and he went on the trip he could speak <coughs> seven different languages he was um um He was uh, traveling and working at all these different 
um, with all the different Indians and hunting, he was very well known for hunting bears in that area. And so when they started off, they gave him some horses and said, you know, you ride alongside us, we'll, we'll catch up to you and you just kill animals and bring them down to the edge of the water and we'll find them. So he, they made up a system of hanging stuff up um, as the men and they all started taking off. George uh, started out and was always in the front because he had to hunt in front, kill something and bring it down so they could catch up to it. So who is most famous in all the statues that goes like this? Who's Clark. doing that all the time? Clark. And who else? Lewis. Lewis. George. And, and who's the other and person that's always like George? And the dog. No, it's always it's always Sac Sac oh, Sacagawea, 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 however you want to say it. She's always like this, right? She's always, oh look, you know what she's saying? Oh look, there's George up in front of us. Uh, he has so many skills that he takes and that they didn't know about, but as they go along on the trip, they, they're finding out that he has these skills. He's such a good hunter. He's teaching all the other men how to hunt. Uh, he actually loses uh, Private Shannon. Remember when Private Shannon got lost? Um, he's actually in front of the boat and he's trying to catch up to it, so he keeps running ahead. Uh, he had gone out hunting with Juilliard. Juilliard wanted him to stay in front of him so that he could you know, keep track of where he was at, but he just took off um, and he didn't slow down. Uh, so George ended up uh, finding him uh, on that first part of the trip that first year when some of the men deserted. Uh, instead of sending a sergeant back, the captains say, we're going to send George Juilliard back to find the deserters and bring them back for, to justice. And so he does, but they also give him another side assignment to go pick up some Indian chiefs. And he says, okay, I'll do that. He ends up finding some horses. And on this trip, he's more than 200 miles from the captains doing all of these chores. He finds the deserters, bring them back, finds the Indians that they want and brings them back and catches up to the core of discovery on the, on the trip. Of course, it wasn't hard because they were going up the river. So you knew where the main river was. And when you were off the river, you were just following Indian trails that were already there. It wasn't like you were breaking through new brush to get there. The Indians had already made all the trails for them. So they're just following the trails. It's very interesting because um, as they meet all these Indians, one of the mistakes they made was they tried to say that every, every tribe was the same. Every tribe had a number one chief, two chief, and three chief. And they never thought that maybe the women might be in, in charge. And so as they went to all these different villages, they would assume it was set in this one pace of way to do things, and they made a lot of mistakes. Thankfully, Juilliard was there and was able to interpret for people and make it so that it was better uh, and reasonable for the um, communications with the tribes. So this happens all the way across the country. Uh, a big part was for Juilliard in Great Falls. Great Falls is really big and we like to do this because Lewis and Clark stayed here for over 30 days. So we have a whole bunch of pages of the journals we can go through. Juilliard, who I said loved to kill bears, kills the biggest bear of the expedition right here in Great Falls. Um, he's always trying to get the bear, so he's always looking for him. So um, the other things that he does on the trip over is um, he's a good horseman. He's able to castrate horses when they need that thing done for the horses so that they can keep their herd together. He, um, he's a good trader. He can trade. One of the big things, though, is that when you meet some new people, the thing that you want to do, and you can't speak to everybody, is you dance right? You would dance, you would play your music and dance. So that happens all the time with Lewis and Clark Expedition. Wherever they're at, they'll stop and they'll do a dance and, and performance thing. But then the other thing is competition. They're going to shoot rifles. Guess who was the best shot? Um, they had races. Guess who was the fastest? Um, there were just so many things that George Juilliard was able to do uh, on this trip that just complemented what this expedition needed. Uh, one of the big things is, is that all of the civilians slept in the uh, tent with the uh, captains. So he had conversations with the captains all the time, uh, just showing you that he was that kind of person, that they would very well respected him and took his opinion all the time on what was going on. Um, he was with um, Lewis when there was the one uh, fatality for the whole expedition. Uh, when they killed the young Blackfeet boy. Uh, in the journals it says they killed two. 
Um, but because I'm a member of the Blackfeet tribe, I know the oral history. One of those boys survived. Uh, and so in our oral history, wow. Sidecalf Hill um, survived and he lived to be 65 years old. He was one that was shot in the belly by Lewis. Um, so um, having all that knowledge, I wish I could stay here and talk to you guys for like seven hours. Mm -hmm. That would be good. Yeah, we would scratch the surface. <laughs> but um, you, my wife has me. <laughs> my wife has me scheduled to be somewhere at six, and I know it's probably already six. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I know. <laughs> I can run fast. Uh, but Juilliard um, is, and this whole Lewis and Clark expedition, it's, it's yeah. such a great story. There's so much information on it, and people are doing information, learning new things about it all the time. Um, we discovered uh, a piece, our group discovered a piece about how they cooked that was misinterpreted for years and years and years. Military protocol said that you had to have, you stopped and you cooked your dinners uh, and you did it in 45 minutes. And in the journals, if you guys have read the journals, it says they're eating nine pounds of meat a day. Do you think you could put, <laughs> cook that much meat, boiling it in water? It says they boiled the meat and fed the men. You could never do it. We tried and tried and tried, and we said, what's wrong here? Well, they do bring four barrels of pork lard with them. And every time they kill a bear, they say they render the fat for the oil. So our cook said, well, what if they were cooking with oil? It boils, right? It looks like boiling. It was so common then that they said, we boiled the meat. It looks like it's boiling. They boiled the meat in oil. Mm. When we did that, we were able to cook the meals in 45 minutes. There's a little trail. Oh, we'll do the little trail. <laughs> Everyone went up this hill. I cannot do that incline. There's a historical commemorative marker of the campsite, of the plate location where they camped out. Okay, Here. good. Because I can't do this yeah. incline. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Thank you. It's
how was it? Oh, it's cute. Okay. Go to the very top. You can see the river coming in and then the river splitting off in yeah. the two directions. Okay. So for it, but you can't get a great picture of the river heading that way because there's landscape. There's trees, yeah. Yeah, but you can see where the decision, you know, the decision point was. Read that if you want. It's like Vicky's dogs. They, Here, they'd be looking for her. Forever. Here's Harold and Vicky so standing in front of Vicky. Shep. <laughs> forever Vicky's faithful. Forever faithful. Aww. Aww. Vicky's dogs. They're not my dogs. That's a nice looking dog, dog too. It's a nice looking dog. And look, they put it on a railroad track where it died. <laughs> it died on a railroad track? That's what he said. That's what he said. It got hit, right? hit, 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 hit by a train. No, no, no that, was the, that wasn't Chef. Both. Was... No, both. Both. No, the oh, dog. The waited dog. For him, but, yeah. waited okay. for him. The, the story was about somebody who lived yeah. in the town that had the dog, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and the dog the was dog. waiting at the station every but day. But it wasn't Lewis and Clark. No, 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 this no. didn't have a train. I know, I know. It wasn't Lewis and Clark. He was talking about some other neighborhood dog. Yeah. That's Chef. That was Chef. The These two are so cute. Look at that. They hold hands. Isn't that adorable? Yes. I could do that, except you have a camera in yours. Mm -hmm. It's a pedestrian bridge. Oh, look at that. There's a barbecue. Is that where we're eating? No, it's not where we're eating. Uh, we're not going to eat at the public house with the barbecue. Yeah. I would say so. Limit six people Limit per six. on the bridge. Okay, here's one. Okay. Three. Two. It's not swaying. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, oh it is swaying. swaying. Oh, it is swaying. Oh. <laughs> Oh dear! Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! We're gonna go look at it. You can't walk straight on this. Oh, my heart can stop. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, we made it. Evacuate oh. the island if you hear eight short blasts. Eight short blasts. What does right. that mean? We need the dams going. Oh look, that's not six people. <laughs> 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 
It does sway. <laughs> it does sway. <laughs> Can't you ate the island if you hear eight short laughs? What for? It means the dam's, the dam's it, breaking. Probably the dam's going to break. <laughs> I hear eight short blasts. <laughs> Get out of my way. Getting out of the way. <laughs> no pain. Oh, you don't want the Looks like food. It just places full of spores. Looks like what? Eaters. Oh, they're here. And they're all of them. Yep, they're on my legs. Sit down. Where are you? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're not eating in there. Can you get me a sandwich? Or whatever? Yeah. I look down and they're. Just no, I, I'm with you. Shall we go to one of these tables in the sun? Yeah. Mark our spot now. It may become a popular option very quickly. Well, there's some over there. See the concrete over there? There are other ones. Yes, yes we did. Oh, you did? Okay, because I... Them out, so I got two See there, there's no flying bugs there are over here. Significantly less mosquitoes here. Yes. No, I. I should. Did you? Were you like landing on you? They were landing on I, me. I was like. They don't even like when me. When I walked a warm, and they around and they me. were swarming on my legs. You see that just as well from here as they can. Yeah. iron boat that everyone keeps talking about. It's actually pretty long. Longer than I thought it would be.
What? You don't have your bat in your patch. You could get seasick. Oh. <laughs> okay, we're gonna walk around the trail. I'm gonna do some cardio. We're walking in the prairie. Remember, every step down is a step up. There's a whole lot to see here. Exactly. Except the iron bolt nobody can find. <laughs> right. We found it. I think we did. Well, I told Ariel not to spend too much time there. He doesn't have his cat. We found the boat. We got seasick on boats. That's what you need 20 year olds for. Yeah. Us old guys wouldn't last long, would we? We wouldn't make it a couple hours. Hours? I'm thinking yeah. minutes. You'd be done in 20 minutes max, huh? Minutes. Minutes. I know. Come on, you're tougher than that. You just don't know it until you, we'd, we'd have to try this out to find, to, for, to find out about how hard Sherpa. tough we are. I want a Sherpa. Yeah, Sherpa, yeah, Sherpa, that's it. <laughs> or, or hire a few relatives. Hire, yeah. Yeah, hire a few relatives, that's really cool. Yeah. We have thousands of them. Stop weeding. Okay, enough, you're getting your shoes dirty.